It's week eight of the college football season. We are deep into the season now over here on another episode of Game Day Gambles brought to you by the KC Sports Authority Podcast. If you're checking us out over here on YouTube, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below to follow along with all of our weekly plays in college football and the NFL and soon to be college basketball and NBA. All right, Greg, let's just get straight into it. College football week eight. Let's not touch on last week. Not the best of weeks for everybody. A lot of wild things happened that week. But looking at college football week eight, what are some of the plays you're targeting this weekend? Yeah, look, just quickly wrapping up week seven. Again, coaching is terrible in NCAA football. We had a lot of bad beats. We're not going to talk about it. Like Keegan said, we're going to roll right into week eight. We're going to make you some money this week. First thing I'm looking at is Thursday night or Friday night, Duke versus FSU. Give me Duke. They're a good football team. FSU is not. Let me give me Duke to keep FSU's misery going. Lay the three. I think they win this game easily. I do not think FSU is good. Duke is sneaky good at five and one, and their defense is very good. I like that. What else? I'm gonna let you just roll through the majority of the plays you got, and then I'll throw a couple in. So the next one I like is Indiana. I they're given six and a half at home versus Nebraska. Again, this Indiana team is very good. They can move the ball. They can score, and they actually play a little defense. Their defense isn't that bad. They're 19th in the country for yards per game. So I don't think asking them to win by a touchdown here is asking too much, considering they have the fourth best offense in the country, averaging 521 yards a game. Give me Indiana at home, minus six and a half. And if you if you're a teaser player out there, this could be one that you tease down and take Indiana and basically a pick them if you like those six point teasers. Like next, that. next one for me is a, another team that if you look at this line, it's a little funny. Tech, uh, Oklahoma's coming off the Red River here, and they got absolutely trounced. Right, they did not look good. South Carolina comes in, and South Carolina has been very competitive in most games. They're three and three. Oklahoma's four and two. But South Carolina's played a beast of a schedule. They have a better offense than Oklahoma. Oklahoma looks terrible on offense. And South Carolina's a better defense. They're giving one and a half. I think this might be a trap game. I think a lot of people are going to play Oklahoma at home. I like South Carolina to go in and get the win on the road. Give me South Carolina giving one and a half on the road. I said it last week. Oklahoma looks bad. And they're going to continue to look bad. So here's a Here's a top 25 showdown that um, I know people are going to be playing, and I know people are going to be betting heavy. I'm a Michigan fan, as I've said on this podcast before, um, but give me Illinois getting yes. three and a half, getting three and a half at home. Illinois is averaging 402 yards a game. They're the 93rd best offense, and Michigan sits in the 200s. Um, we got Illinois averaging 31 points a game to Michigan's 23. If you flip it on defense, I know the the belief out there is Michigan has this great defense, but if you're actually looking at it, Michigan gives up 22.3 points a game. Illinois gives up less at 20. Give me Illinois getting three and a half at home, and I think they win the game outright. Keep oh, yeah. Thoughts on that one. Uh, that's where – that's one of my – I guess upset plays if you want to call it an upset. Three and a half point home dog as a top 25 team with a solid defense. Um, I don't know how they they squeaked out this this last weekend. That was a, a wild, wild finish. Uh, but yeah, again, Michigan does not. They're the, to me, they're like Oklahoma. They don't scream with a lot of confidence. They're not that exciting. And uh I I will take I will take the the home team there. Next one for me is another top 25 matchup. And this one, again, I think the line is off. And it's Tennessee versus Alabama. Tennessee did not look good last week, right? They just didn't. They looked like they were absolutely lost. And I think a lot of people were getting nervous that they were going to lose that game. They came back. They won it late. But now they get Alabama at home. And a lot of times... We talk about a look-ahead game, right? They had Florida. They thought they were going to crush him at home. They didn't. They were looking ahead to Alabama. I think that's what happened last week. So I ask you this. Do a lot of people out there realize that Tennessee has a better offense? Because they do. They're a better offense than Alabama. They average more points, 
42 to 41. They are better when it comes to total yards by a lot. And here's the kicker that people probably don't get. Who do you think has a better defense? It's Tennessee, and it's not even close. Tennessee is the eighth best defense in the country when it comes to yards per game. Alabama is 112. Tennessee gives up only 10 points a game. Alabama's given up 20. Now, you might say Alabama's played a tougher schedule. All right, maybe you're right. Tennessee's at home. They're getting a field goal. People are going to be betting Alabama, but I will not be. Give me Tennessee at home, and I will be betting this one big plus a field goal. And if it goes to three and a half, put even more on it. That's again, I didn't I know we didn't talk about the games beforehand on here of what we were gonna bet, but that that's one of my strong feeling plays this week that the Tennessee bounces back. Alabama has not looked good the last few weeks, so maybe they are in a bounce back spot, but that could also be exposing them for who they are. They're gonna put up a lot of points, but they're also gonna give up a lot of points. So I like that there. Um, I want to throw out a wild one here because the spread's really big. They've looked really good, they put up a ton of points, and they blow everyone out of the water. Give me number 23 ranked Army to cover 15 and a half at home against East Carolina. They're blowing teams out by 30 points most weeks. They don't ever take their foot off the gas. They're going to keep doing that again this week. So 15 and a half is still not big enough to, to take the, the road team. So I love that one there. Um, the other one I was going to bring up here is LSU Arkansas. I think I like Arkansas at home plus two and a half. LSU's coming off the big win against Ole Miss. Brian Kelly didn't do what we thought he might and, and squander that game away. They still had an opportunity to do that. Uh, but I think they, they get all excited about their bounce back and college football playoff hopes. But Arkansas at home, tough environment, tough team, slows the game down, gets it ugly, and Arkansas ends up winning this game. Or I mean, they at least covered the field goal. I think they also win it outright. This is my uh, this is another one I had on my list. If you can get three, which is flexing between two and a half and three, love Arkansas getting three. I still like them at two and a half because I think they're going to win this game. This is another one where I think people would be surprised to know Arkansas is actually averaging more yardage per game on offense than LSU, and Arkansas has a much better defense. Give me Arkansas at home to win that game. LSU will have a letdown after that win against Ole Miss, a game once again that they should never have won. Lane Kiffin just proved he's a worse coach than Brian Kelly somehow and blew the game late. LSU gets out of there with a win. I don't know how Ole Miss had that, had that game won. Yep. I, I agree. I was not happy about that. All right, three more games I want to end with in, in this episode to go through. Uh, number 17, K-State on the road at West Virginia. West Virginia is a three-and-a-half-point home dog on most sites. K-State has struggled to look really good on the road this year. They managed to, to get it done in Colorado, but just barely Colorado still covered. We know they got spanked at BYU. They almost lost to Tulane on the road. So I like West Virginia to cover the three-and-a-half. And if you're looking for an upset pick this weekend, I also like them to – win that game outright again Avery Johnson needs to prove to me that he can win it with his arm in a tough environment went toe-to-toe with Shadur Sanders and looked pretty good but honestly they were carried by DJ Giddens and somehow they stopped Travis Hunter so I like K-State to I'm sorry I like West Virginia to cover the three and a half and possibly win that game outright any any thoughts on that if I was betting this game I'd probably small lean to the home team but no real opinion here And then uh, we got to talk about the other local team, KU, abysmal season. Don't want to spend a lot of time. Very frustrated. Five and a half point favorite. Are you kidding me? That's way too much. Like, I I don't know. They're going to be without Cornell Wheeler. They might be without Kobe Bryant. Um, Yes, offense is looking better and getting there, but now the defense is falling apart. Houston's a terrible, terrible team. They've got a mobile quarterback that can run. So somehow KU is going to put up a lot of points and still let Houston in this game. So I don't know if the five and a half is, is worth covering on KU's part. So I, I I'm kind of leaning um, Houston to cover there. I just, I just, I don't know if I can feel confident placing a bet on a Kansas football team right now. Um, I don't blame you for feeling that way. I do. do I think they win this game. I do. Um, I'm going to parlay them in a money line with Miami. I think okay. Miami. I think Miami will win. Um, so that would be my play. I'm going to sweeten the Miami 
money line by adding Kansas because I just don't think Kansas will lose this game at home. They got to win, right? Come on. I hope not. They need to, but honestly, I mean, for the fan base, the season's over. So whether they win or lose doesn't no, matter. The season's a waste. No, but no one cares. <laughs> it'd be cool if they win, but they're still so far off from a bowl game that they, I mean, they have to win out. And I don't think that's going to happen. Um, anyway, last game, big time top five matchup. Georgia on the road at Texas. Texas has by far been the best team in college football. Four and a half point, point favorite at home. They put up points in a hurry. Georgia has not been the offensive juggernaut that they have been in the past. They have not looked that great. Uh, road matchup, plus four and a half. I feel like you're going to see a lot of people bet in Georgia because this is the SEC and an SEC conference game. They're going to cover it, but I think I like I like Texas to to win, and I think they win by more than four and a half. So this is the one I circled. I am on the other side. I think you want to give me Georgia with four and a half or five. I think they proved against Alabama. They got a lot of fight in them on the road, and I think this game will go down to the last possession, just like we saw with Georgia and Alabama. And I wouldn't be shocked if this is the game Tennessee loses. Look, the SEC. Texas. Like, Texas loses. Texas loses, yeah. If, if this is a – the SEC is an absolute bear, right? I mean, th this conference is by far, to me, the best conference, the most – the deepest conference. I don't think you can go undefeated in this conference, Keegan. So if Texas is going to lose a game and you look at their schedule, I think this could be the one. Maybe Georgia goes in and snips them because – when I looked at Georgia's schedule, I said, all right, they're not going to win at Alabama and Texas, but I think they might get a split. So I think we know, obviously, they lost at Bama. Maybe this is the one they, they win and they get a split here. But That's fair. Agree with you. Texas has looked the best in college football. To me, to me, it's the first team to get the 30 wins, and I think Texas can get there in the second quarter. Here, Here's my issue. Who's starting a quarterback for Doesn't Texas? matter. Doesn't matter. See to me it does. If Manning was if Manning was in there, I'd be on Texas laying four and a half. So you think Manning's? I mean, I'm not disagreeing that Manning's the better quarterback between the two. One hundred percent. If Manning goes in, they're the national champions. Maybe they'll play him. Maybe yours will struggle. But yeah, that's that's the last for game plays. I know you've got a, a money line parlay you want to throw out there for this week. Yeah, that was it. I, I mentioned it earlier. I like Miami and Kansas. Money line them together. You get a little bit plus money. I think they both win the game. There you have it. I'm sure we'll have a couple more plays again. College football, I think it's as much fun as it is to talk about these games ahead of time. I like to go day of and start tracking how things go and, and doing some live bets. So I'll try and get some more plays out later this weekend. Uh, make sure you're liking, subscribing to the podcast below. Make sure you're checking out the NFL Best Bets where we are on an absolute heater with the NFL. If you've been playing along with uh, with us there, you should be making a lot of money. And we went six and one last week, looking to do just the same this weekend. And our round robin TD is going to hit this week. I, I'm feeling it. So make sure you check out that episode and then uh, come back each week for all of our future plays. But that'll wrap it up for this one. Again, you can send us any plays you have, any questions you have on any games you want us to cover on future episodes or any plays you want to throw out there that you love. Hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok at KCSA pod. And uh, make sure you guys come back each week for the next episode. So, again, that'll wrap it up for this one. We appreciate you guys as always, and we'll catch you in the next episode.